Good evening and welcome into the Hear Sports Podcast Show. I'm Kyle Newman, your host. And I'm Rhett Hensley, your co-host. On this show, anything sports goes, whether professional, college, or even high school. Debate is highly likely, laughter is always encouraged, good times is a given, and hashtag great sports talk will be a reoccurring theme. Tonight we will talk about the top five running backs in the NFL, NBA free agency, Floyd Mayweather, and the Greenbrier Classic with Tiger Woods. Rhett Hensley, 7th Hear Sports Podcast Show. It's a late one, but that's because of our schedules tomorrow. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm exhausted. We had a great weekend, didn't we, Kyle? We had a great weekend, a great 4th of July weekend, and it's not over yet because we get to talk sports, but we get to be together again for another show. How lucky are we? Well, we're great. We are lucky, lucky people. Absolutely. Well, let's get into this because we have a lot to talk about. We're going to try to stay on track tonight. Let's get in the first segment here at top five running backs in the NFL. I have a feeling that we are going to agree to disagree on a few of these, so I want you to kick it off with your number five running back in the NFL that you think this upcoming season. All right, I will kick it off. DeMarco Murray. Wow. I got to tell you, I am shocked. He is not going to have the front line that he had with the Dallas Cowboys, and I think that's what made him a hole. So we we will see him fail, possibly, or we will see him do great. And I see him kind of failing, and that's why he's not my number one, or number two, or number three, or number four. I I sense a little saltiness there, Mr. Cowboy, with him going to your rival Eagles there's, with that pick. There's no saltiness in there at all. It's just facts. You're not going to have the offensive line you did with the Dallas Cowboys. They have had a struggling offensive line in recent years have the Eagles, but as you'll hear one of my running backs, clearly good enough for one of their amazing running backs, but your number five, DeMarco Murray, really interesting, I got to tell you, a little disrespectful to a man I really can't stand, Um, all right, well, my number five plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and his name's Le'Veon Bell. And the man is impressive, so young, out of Michigan State, only a couple years in the league. Last year, he was second in the NFL in rushing yards for 1,361. He had eight touchdowns, averaged 85 yards a game. He had zero fumbles. This was during the regular season. This impressed me with him. Um, I think that he will have another successful season, and I'm putting him at number five. But you're going to have Ben Roethlisberger back. Clearly, you had a good enough offensive line last year to put up those kind of numbers. I think it will happen again. I think he'll probably rush for around the same number. He stays relatively healthy, got in a little bit of trouble with Blunt. But I think that he is on the right track. He'll make the right decisions off the field and stay on the field. And I think that he will continue to shine. This young running back's impressive with a lot of skill. So I'd have to say that Le'Veon Bell will continue for the Steelers a good running game and be my number five, Rhett. All right, well, I I can see that. Uh, I'll give you my number four. All right. Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon. Yeah. Second in the league for running uh, rushing yards. He had 83 catches for 854 yards. He has quick feet, three touchdowns off those catches, excellent hands and great power. And, you know, he did have some off-season troubles. I believe he has a three-game suspension coming into 2015 start, but... Enough for him, I believe, to still be able to put up those numbers. Because he missed a few games this past year, too. And had 1,361 yards. Yeah rushing so uh that's why he's my number four see if he's gonna pan out yeah it'll be interesting can respect that number four for sure my number four is why i think your number five is disrespectful and my number four is Lashawn mccoy for the philadelphia eagles this man was third in the league in rushing last year 
with 1,319 yards. He had five touchdowns, averaged 82 yards per game. But what was incredible to me, he had 312 attempts. He, he carried a lot of the load for the Eagles, and he is so fast. And it goes to show you that their offensive line's a lot better than you're giving them credit for. And I think that he will have – this is what amazes me. He was on a team that now DeMarco Murray's on, who's an even better running back. But LaShawn McCoy is a special player. And he puts up those kind of stats, and I think that he, another young guy, will have another great year. Um, too bad he won't be the starter for yeah. the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I will give you, I will let you know in this one, DeMarco Murray, I am calling it right now, with that offensive line, he'll get injured in the first seven games. Wow, we've got a prediction here. He will be injured within the first seven games. Marco Murray, he's a guy that cannot cannot get hit. He gets he's injury prone. So Saltiness from a cowboy, hoping to see something like this. There, there's no there's no offensive line like the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll see. You know, I have my prediction, and uh, hopefully, the Dallas Cowboys beat out the Philadelphia Eagles. Go Cowboys! <laughs> well. I guess I can understand where you're coming from. It will be an interesting thing to see. How about you give me your number three? Adrian Peterson. We're in agreement. There you go. go. Ahead. He's coming back into the league. Uh, his presence is going to be great. They said it's the best that they've seen him play uh, in the off season. So, you know, the guy could put up numbers before that, I'll tell you that. And I'm looking forward to watching this guy play. And let's see if he still has the speed and the power to take this league by storm. Yeah, well, as everyone knows, Adrian Peterson got in trouble making a terrible decision off the field this past year where he was only able to play one game. Dude still ran for 75 yards. And this 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 guy is something special in agreement like i mentioned with Rhett at number 3 adrian peterson the year bef- the year prior in 2013 he was fifth in the league with 1266 rushing yards the year before that he almost set an nfl record passing eric dickerson uh for the most rushing yards in the league he was first in 2012 with 2097 rushing yards uh, this man's going to come back and not run for 2,000 yards, but he will run and be within the top three of the running backs in the NFL. He's that special. He's an absolute monster when he runs the, with the football, runs over about everybody, uh, has incredible speed. I think that he'll learn from his mistakes. I think he'll be motivated to come out and make Vikings fans happy. And I, I expect him to put up some big time numbers. It's a it's a an offensive run league, deep running backs in this league, and I think that he will be one of those on top. Number three, Adrian Peterson. Rhett and I both in agreement there. All right, I w- as we get down to the nitty gritty, top two. Give me your number two. I think we're going to be pretty similar on this one. There's right a good chance. There. Marshawn Lynch. There you go. We're pretty similar. The guy is an animal. You know, he should have uh, have another Super Bowl ring right now, except just poor coaching choices. The guy, it's fifth straight 1,000-yard running season. He's, boy, he just kills it. Seventh in his career. Touchdowns might be hard to come with when you have Russell Wilson, um, you know, taking some of the carries and then adding Jimmy Butler or Jimmy Graham, sorry, wrong, wrong sport. <laughs> wrong sport, Rhett. Every time Boy, I it say is late. Jimmy, I usually think of Butler. But Jimmy Graham to the lineup, so they're going to have a pretty solid team in this upcoming season. So uh, he only averages 295.3 attempts over the last four seasons. So it's going to be interesting. It will be interesting. And you, and you make a good point, and we're in agreement. Marshawn Lynch is my number two. Uh, Skittles. That's all I can say. This man is the strongest. The rainbow. Uh, this man's the strongest running back in the NFL, and he runs like it. Uh, it's the dude's a locomotive train. 
he cannot be brought down. It's exciting to watch. I, I literally have never been so excited watching a player than I am watching Marshawn Lynch run the football. Um, he was fourth in the league this past year, 1,306 yards. Um, he only fumbled the ball once, 81 yards a game, 13 touchdowns, seven 20-plus yard rushes, um, 4.7 yards a carry, and he had 280 attempts. Again, when you have an, a quarterback like Russell Wilson who can arguably run just as well, just not as powerful, it, it really adds for some balance. And they bring Jimmy Graham in, and now you wonder, all right, well, Marshawn Lentz is actually probably going to carry the ball less this year because they're, because Russell Wilson will be running it more and he'll be throwing it more with the weapons they have, particularly Jimmy Graham. He will be touching the ball a lot. But the balance is the key here with me, and he's he's stayed healthy. He's a beast. It's like he's he's he can't get injured. Uh, I love the way he runs. He should have been a Super Bowl champ this last year uh, if it wasn't for the cheating Patriots. Uh, basically, the Seahawks are in good hands with Marshawn Lynch. Every year just seems to go beast mode. And I expect it again. I expect him, you know, I'm putting him at number two, which means I think that he uh, will be more than just up there in yardage and touchdowns. Do I think that he will be in the top three for rushing yards? Maybe not because of Russell Wilson and Jimmy Graham, but that doesn't define the best running back in the league to me because he, he can carry this team. It's not all about the statistics. Um, especially when you look at the number one rusher in the league this last year, DeMarco Murray, dude didn't even get past the first round in the playoffs. So I think that, that there's a lot more that goes into it, but I believe that Marshawn Lynch will prove to be the number two best running back in the NFL this upcoming season, okay. just like you. Yes. Which means we have to get to our number one, as I hate to with mine. What's your number one, Rhett? Jamal Charles, Kansas City Chiefs. That is off the radar right there. That's a bold pick. I can respect it, but that's a bold pick. He's a dynamic dynamic player. You know, he, he had 206 carries last season, his lowest total since his rookie year. 13th in the league in rushing yards. Yes. Pretty far down. Yes, but he had over a, he had 1033 yards. And nine touchdowns over 15 games. That right there is great. 40 uh, touches on the ball for 291 yards. Five touchdowns with that. Great player. You know, he's, he's under the radar, but, you know, I think that this season, you know, he's going he's gonna to fly right up there. He's going to fly up there, Kyle. What do you think? <laughs> I think you're wrong. <laughs> I'm going to completely disagree with you. Though he's a very talented running back, he's on a struggling Chiefs team, and I think that their offensive line is not very good. Uh, I think that the stats say that. You say in 15 games, but it's a 16-game season, so he only missed one game. They didn't make the playoffs. I don't think that he will be up there. Certainly don't think he deserves number one Two hundred and six carries, buddy. Yeah, that's uh, it's not a lot. Um, I don't think that he will be up there in number one. I, I probably wouldn't even put him in the top ten, quite honestly. So that's that's how far off the radar that is. I'm going to get to a guy that I have to respect but do not like, and that's because who he played on last year. My number one's DeMarco Murray. Uh, from the formerly known Dallas Cowboys, the New Eagles, this man carried the ball 392 times for the Dallas Cowboys, and he stayed healthy. That's unbelievable to me. He had a great offensive line, but he ran for 1,845 yards. He had 13 touchdowns. He fumbled the ball three times. This is the most impressive to me. It goes to show how much of a beast he is. He had 115 yards a game. He had 15 20-plus yard rushes. He had 4.7 yards a carry. That's impressive. You, you said it, Kyle. He had a great offensive line. He did. Now, in the few... In, in the past few seasons, when the, the Dallas Cowboys did not have a great line, this guy got injured multiple times. But he's a and new running back. we will see that in the upcoming seasons. I disagree. He's a new We're, running back. He showed it last year. It, it, does, 
He's a new running back because his offensive line was amazing. He even bought him. He even bought him MacBooks because he was so. Uh, they basically gave him a cushion. They did, the and it helps to have an offensive line. But you got to be a good running back to be able to get yardage and not just have an offensive line. He's a great running back. He's going to lead he's the league fast, in fumbles. He's fast. He's powerful. He stays healthy. He takes care of the ball for the most part. He had three fumbles. That's not awful. Certainly not the worst in the league. Uh, if it wasn't for him, your Cowboys don't even get close to making the playoffs. And what's even more impressive about that is they had a quarterback in Tony Romo who is a great quarterback, and yet they relied more on DeMarco Murray because of how good the offensive running game was. Because the offensive so, line was just amazing. Exactly. And the Eagles' offensive line is good, hence LaShawn McCoy. So he's going to be amazing again. We'll and see. And that's why he's my number one. We'll see. DeMarco Murray is a special player. I expect it from the Eagles this year. I think he'll embarrass your Cowboys. We're putting it in the books, Kyle. We're putting it in the books. You know, he's getting injured this year. And I'm putting it down. And I'm putting it in the books. Not only do they finish ahead of your Cowboys, but he will embarrass your Cowboys the he, two times he plays them. We'll, we'll see. We will see. It will be exciting to see. But there's our top five. little bit of disparity. More agreement than not. Not unusual for Rhett and I, but that's what makes it fun. So let's get into this next segment here, though, Rhett. Let's talk NBA free agency. lot's been going on since the free agency began July 1st. Already July 5th, and we've had a ton of deals, so I want you to mention some of these, and we're going to talk about them. Why don't well, you start? The one that pops out to me most, and I like the most, is Tristan Thompson agreeing to a new deal. That is, that is one, of the, one of the big things that pop out to me. The guy's going to be a great player. You know, He's 24 years old, and you could see what he did in the playoffs this year. The man is an animal, has, has a fantastic attitude, and I think that he's a great team player. He is. He, uh, he needs to work on his offensive game, but he's a great rebounder. He's an animal. And I don't care, a rebounder, that might be the biggest asset as a player in the post of all the other things is being able to rebound the basketball. Dennis Rodman. And give your team second and third and fourth opportunities opportunities and that's what he does uh i wish the pacers would have picked someone like him up but he is going to be in cleveland competing against the pacers and really playing well and making it difficult for them and other teams because he is a solid player and that's an interesting one and quite honestly if it wasn't for him the Cavs probably aren't in the nba finals so he he's done a great job for them, and that's that, a bold statement. That does stand out to me. It really does. Uh, as do a lot of other ones, and I'm going to mention it right now because it's my Indiana Pacers. Your Indiana Pacers. How about the Pacers signing Monte Ellis, which is a phenomenal whoop, whoop. move. Uh, and that's not the only thing. We're going to start with that. Uh, this guy averaged about 20 points per game for the Dallas Mavericks this last year. Exactly what the Indiana Pacers needed. Another veteran guard, veteran player in general, to help this roster out. And that's what he will do. I love it. They're looking to play small. He will add to that. His assists are up in his career as he's playing more and more unselfish basketball. And he can still score. And he can still get to the hoop. I love this pickup for the Indiana Pacers, Red. Exactly, exactly. And one that I would like to point out is LaMarcus Aldridge signing with the Spurs. Tell you what, are we going to have a deadly team? Are they going to have a deadly team or what? Yeah, I don't know what we is. Yeah, I don't know what we Indiana Pacers is we. Yes, Red. I got messed up on that one. But are they going to have a phenomenal team or what? It'll that be a is, good team. That is going to be a team to watch out for. When you have the Spurs with Tim Duncan, Ginobili, Tony Parker, Kawhi Leonard, it's already a dangerous team. I mean, it's like the, the old guys at the YMCA. You know, it is. You've got to watch out for them. And with adding this piece to the puzzle, they're going to be dangerous. They will be dangerous. LaMarcus Aldridge is a phenomenal player. It was a player I, I was hoping that the Pacers would go after, but after they signed Monte Ellis, they didn't have that money in the car that were that was there. But now 
I want to mention something else with the Pacers. The Pacers are letting go of Roy Hibbert. The man is getting out of here, and that's freeing up nice money for Indiana. And specifically, getting Roy Hibbert out of there, who do they bring in? I think it needs to be a big man that, that threw out the option of LaMarcus Aldridge type of a player at that position. But there's still other players out there that they can go for, need to get. They needed that money. Uh, I think we both are in agreement. We were hoping this was going to happen because he was just not getting it done, and it did. Exactly. Hibbert's know. gone. And that freed up some space so we could sign Rodney Stuckey again. Exactly where I was going To a three-year deal for $21 million. That is a great pickup for the Indiana Pacers. I'm glad that they kept him. He is going to be a, a great six-man. And I'm going I'm to put it on the books right now. He's possibly going to bring a sixth man. Um, a sixth man. Man of the year award. Man of the year. Yes, he sure will. I think that he will. <laughs> and it will be great to see. It will be. That's a, That was a great signee. Uh, Rodney Stuckey performed well for the Pacers last year. A great player that they brought in. Another great player for this Pacers roster to have for this next year. And that still leaves Indiana with at least $7 million to try and bring in another veteran free agent. Bring in the big man. Bring in a power forward type size player. Because that's what they need when they're going to look for that small lineup. That small style of play. You mentioned it. Jordan Hill, a free agent for the Lakers. I would love to see Indiana pick this man up. He is perfect for what Indiana is looking for. And he's young and has a lot of promise. And that's what I like. Exactly, and you know, another another deal that was out in the makings, Kevin Love signing with the Cleveland Cavaliers like to a five-year deal. Unfortunate to see this man return, but... Mainly because Indiana's got to play this team in the division, but yeah, uh, as I told you, Red, it's bold, he Kyle. was not going to leave. It's bold, five Kevin years. Kevin Love, is, he's got some long-term in there with that contract. It's exactly how they set it up. LeBron will be next, uh, and they have that same team there again. They might even have some money to still get another free agent or two because I don't think J.R. Smith is going to return. So it's going to be interesting to see what he happens. He wants to return. Yeah, I don't, I, it'll be interesting. Well, at first he didn't and wanted to test free agency. Now there's talks that he does. I don't know what will happen. His, his plans were to opt out and get a bigger contract just like Amon Shumpert did. And they're offering him a forty-year or forty million dollar contract. I don't know how many years that is, but he is staying at Cleveland Cavalier. Yeah, very intriguing, for sure. But that team will certainly be the best in the league this next year, and it'll be tough for the Pacers to play them with a move like that. I want to mention this one because this was a player I thought the Pacers could maybe go after in free agency, but. Not for the contract he got it for, so it it wouldn't have worked out in the end. Reggie Jackson commits to the Pistons again. Five-year, $80 million contract. That's $20 million a year. That might be a little bit overpaid in my mind, but certainly a great sign for the Pistons there. Again, in our division, trying to keep on the upslope as they're trying to rebuild that team in Detroit. But what do you think about that, Rhett? Reggie Jackson committing to the Pistons again? You know, I think it might be a little, little too much for them to a little too much of a contract. Twenty million—that is crazy. A year. Um, you know, he is a promising player, twenty-five years old. But twenty million dollars a year? Holy cow! It's a lot that of money. Is, Dwayne Wade is getting paid that. LaMarcus and, Aldridge is getting paid that. Yeah, and that is just, that's kind of blows my mind. But um, Speaking of Dwayne Wade, he should not be getting paid that. Let's mention another player, Dwayne Wade, one-year contract. I, I think it's Dwayne Wade. Million. I think that $20 million is more of a, uh, more of a kind of a Kobe type of thing. He got paid $48 million a couple of years ago for two years. It's more of a farewell, I feel like, um, thank you for doing everything that you've done for this team type of thing. And that's why I believe that he he signed that contract. Yeah, crazy. I didn't figure he'd leave Miami, but I'm glad he didn't because they're still our rival, and I love to see it. 
Pacers Heat. And what what else do they do? Obviously, well, they signed they they re-signed Goran Dragic, which was a good sign for them because he was looking to test free agency, and he ended up staying put. What do you think about Dragic, Rhett, staying in Miami? Well, I would have liked him, that's for sure. That, yeah. Um, but you know, he is he's an interesting player. He's he has the whole little shebang. He's a white guy that can just put up the numbers. Yep, and he that's can right. he finds his way to score. That's for sure, and I like him. I do too. I, I do too. Uh, he's a solid player, and and that was a good pick for them. Just goes to show you how much free agency here. We still have a lot more to talk about. Lou Williams heading to the Lakers. He was the NBA Sixth Man of the Year this past year. He agreed to a deal with the Lakers. What do you think about Lou going to LA? I think it's going to be interesting. Um, Lou, he had a. He had a pretty decent season um, the past couple of years. He has he did have a uh, an injury, I believe Achilles or yep. an ACL injury, but he came back pretty strong from that. And uh, I think it's a great pickup for the Lakers. Yeah, the Lakers are making moves. I think it is a good pickup. Another move that they made is they acquired Celtics forward Brandon Bass. Uh, I like how Brandon Bass plays. He was a big reason the Celtics turned their their team around this past year. He kind of reminds me of Draymond Green. For one, he looks like the dude. Mm-hmm. For two, he plays like him a lot. He gives a great effort, and I think that this is the Lakers making some really good decisions, not to mention that they got Roy Hibbert taking him from us. So the Lakers are really, and they drafted D'Angelo Russell. So you want to talk about a team who's not going to be as bad as they were last year? That's the Los Angeles Lakers. In a tough Western Conference, but they have a young team that is going to have a veteran Kobe Bryant back. I think that this team will make some noise. I would love to see them sneak into the playoffs. But they make another move or two. I think they're a 7 or 8 seed in the playoffs. What do you think, Rhett? Exactly. that. I could see it happening. Um I don't know about a, a six seed, but I could see a seven or eight seed. Well, I said a seven or eight. Oh, I thought you said six. No. Oh, can I say you're putting them up there a little too high? Boy, you're tired tonight. I am. I'm a little tired. But, yeah, I think that seven or eight seed would be great. Um, I do want to see Kobe get that sixth ring. We'll see if it happens. They're going to have to definitely make a couple more moves for that to happen. That is a tough conference did you like brandon bass oh i think he's a, i think he's a great player i liked how he played at boston um he he's a fighter that's for sure and he can he's he can score but you know staying healthy that's that's what the lakers need and uh, he has stayed pretty healthy so far in his career yeah that's very that's very neat um i want to mention this guy because he's a former hilltopper my future alma mater, Jeremy Evans, is heading to the Dallas Mavericks, the 2012 NBA Slam Dunk champion. Uh, he's got a two-year minimum contract, but I like the way this guy plays. I like that he's hanging around. Exactly. You know, he signed a two-year contract with the Dallas Mavericks, and, you know, we'll see if it helps the Dallas Mavericks out. Uh, Dallas Mavericks are a team that is going to, I, I I like them either way. I mean, I they'll like be their, a surprise team. I love I their think. owner. So. I think they'll be better than this past year. This past year, I think they were a disappointment. I think they should have been better than they were. The Rondo thing just came out, and he destroyed them, in my opinion. So uh, I think getting rid of him was a great move. Absolutely, I agree with that. Here's one I want to mention: DeAndre Jordan going to Dallas. What do you think about DeAndre jo- Jordan signing a four-year max contract and leaving the Clippers? I think it's crazy. I thought he screwed us out of getting rid of Roy Hibbert, first of all. <laughs> but um, it, it happened, thank goodness. But DeAndre Jordan, he would have been a great pickup. That dude, he can basically the only thing this dude can do is grab rebounds and dunk the ball. But he can do both of those fantastically. He abs- That's for sure. He absolutely can. Uh, what do you think about Rondo? You mentioned him going to the Kings. Oh, uh, well, I don't think any team should even sign him. I think he's an awful chemistry player. And <laughs> One year, nine and a half million. All right, not, nine and a half million. I think that would be a, a pretty decent pickup for nine and a half million, give him a shot. But he definitely has an attitude problem, and I don't like it. 
Yeah, he sure does. I completely agree with you about that. Another one I want to mention, Rhett, Robin Lopez joining the New York Knicks. Four-year, $54 million contract. Uh, a team that you said was going to be looking to make some moves you think would be better. What do you think? Robin Lopez is going to help that out? I think that he will. Um, the Knicks, I think, are going to be a pretty decent pretty decent team next year. They're not going to be uh, as great. I mean, they're going to not be as good as recent years that we've seen um, a few years back. But, you know, I think that they're going to – I think they'll slip into the eighth seed. Um, but that's about it. You think that was a good pickup? I think it was Lopez? a great pickup. Um, I think that he's going to be one of the reasons why they'll, uh, why I'm saying that they're going to make it into the eighth seed. Uh, he played very well for the Blazers, and you know, he's going to help them out. That's for sure. They need anything. The, the team just sucked last year. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I think that that will help them for sure. I agree with you. Here's one that I'm sure you were going to mention, so I'll mention it real quick. We talked about it. A while ago, Tobias Harris is staying in Orlando. They agreed on a four-year, $64 million contract. You said that you thought that was a little too much. I liked it because I think he has upside. And $16 million a year, well, they're, they're trusting in him. What do you think? Well, I think that he's had some uh, injury issues. But, you know, he is a young player. And, you know, maybe he just got those injuries out of the way. Who knows? That's but right. um, he has he has potential to be a pretty decent player, and the Orlando Magic is going to be a team to watch out for because they got old Victor. So him and him and Victor, I think, are going to put in work this year. I think they will. I think they will. Who else do you caught? Who else? What else caught your eye in free agency? Who else caught my eye? Um, I think that we we talked about the Dwayne Wade one. That that one caught my eye. That was. That was really unexpected for me, um, but I'd say the LeBron opting out, that one, that one was a pretty big one, waiting to see if Tristan Thompson decided to sign back. That that one right there, uh, I was surprised when he opted out, but you know he is expected to sign back with the Cleveland Cavaliers. But how crazy would it be, Kyle, if he left again? Crazy. Wouldn't that rattle some cages? Yeah, absolutely. It'd be it would be wild. It really would. Uh how about Patrick Beverly going back to the Rockets? Four year twenty three million. He's a great defender, that's for sure. He um, is, and he's improved a lot on offense too. He can shoot the long ball. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I think that he uh he's gonna be a great asset for the Houston Rockets, you know. James Harden can't do it all. I don't like the guy. But um, Patrick Beverly, he's definitely going to put in some work for them. I agree. Now, this one, this was a little interesting. He helped. Corey Brewer is staying with the Rockets, too. But a three-year, $23.4 million contract, that's $8 million a year almost. What do you think about Corey Brewer and the Rockets? He had a pretty decent season last year. Uh, I didn't think he had a, a great season. But... You know, I think that's kind of a... $8 million ups- is quite a bit. Yeah, $8, $8 million. <laughs> $8 isn't, but $8 million, that's a, that's a pretty penny. And I don't know, really know if he's worth that, but uh, hey, I could care less if they spend their money on that. Go right ahead. Yeah, absolutely. This one stood out to me. Marco Bellinelli going to the Kings. How many times have I said I wanted him? Yes, exactly. 3 years, 19 million dollars. The man got the Kings got a steal in this cheap contract. Exactly. That's crazy. The Pacers could have really used someone like this. What do you think about him going to the Kings? I think that they got a they got a great little player right there. I have seen the Kings have been making some moves um but, you know, I think that that he's going to be a a great asset to that team. Six million dollars a year. That's just crazy to me. This man was a key key part to this Spurs offense exactly. this past year. If I was them, I would not have let him go. But no kidding. I think that they had to free up space to get um, Lamarcus Aldridge. So absolutely. Well, what about Wesley Matthew going with Wesley Matthews going to the Mavericks? Four year deal. I think it was a. Uh, I think it was a two. Uh, too expensive. I think they're offering him $16 million. 
he is just coming off a what was it Achilles tear um, Achilles or ACL I think it was a knee injury yeah it was, it was ACL I believe yeah so you know he's a good player I think it's kind of risky of to pay somebody that much if they're coming off that big of an injury I, agree. I don't know if that is a great move on their part but um, we'll see I I don't like that idea of that but um hey as i said once again and i will say it again it's their problem yeah very true uh it's very interesting to me uh to say the least i would but i would agree with you that's a lot of money to offer someone who's coming off of an injury like that we've seen it before with the greats the superstars and they're just not the same player it takes a while to get back to form this one stood out to me as well greg monroe a guy who i've been pleading for the indiana pacers to pick up Max deal with the Milwaukee Bucks. We're talking three-year, $50 million. That's a lot of money. Uh, clearly, with that type of money he was looking for, the Pacers wouldn't have been able to afford him. But I think the Bucks got a big victory with this one. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I like Greg Monroe. He, uh, he definitely did cash out on that one. <laughs> That's for sure. He sure did. Yeah, he is a great player. Um, I, think he was, I think he was very underrated when he was at uh, Detroit Pistons. So, you know, I think he's going to have his time to shine there. And that's, that's going to be great for him. Um, it's going to make that Milwaukee Bucks team even better. And I have said in the past that that team's going to be a team to watch out for. No doubt, no doubt. How about Aaron Aflalo and the Knicks agreeing to a two-year, $16 million contract? I don't like how he's getting paid $8 million a yeah. year. But um, I think that he, he'll be able to help the team. But I don't know if... I don't think $8 million is definitely worth that. Mm, no, I would I would agree with that. Uh, this was one that we were kind of pleading, come on, Pacers, he's a free agent, leave. He didn't. Draymond Green staying with the Warriors. Five-year, $85 million contract. And I was surprised by that because there was they, they had issues with his contract, and he was not very happy. But I got an update the next day, and he signed a contract. So I guess they uh, they definitely worked those... Those kinks, kinks out. out. Yeah, great word. <laughs> like, yeah, it is a great word. I guess so. That's a lot of money. I don't know if the man is worth that much money. He's a good player. Uh, he gives a lot of good energy, and he fights hard. But I just don't know if he's worth that much money for that for that long. Uh, that would make me nervous for sure. But I thought it was a good pick up. It was good for the, the, the Golden State to keep him for sure. Definitely. It for them. Another one Rhett, that stood out to both of us, Jimmy Butler going back to the Bulls. No uh, shocked. Five-year, $90 million contract. Uh, I'll just say that I think the Bulls did what they had to do with this man. They well-deserved for that big contract. If he, if he didn't take it there, he was taking it somewhere else. And you're a little surprised because you thought he was going to leave. I, I, think? I thought he was going to leave. I thought he was going to join Kobe, that's for sure. Uh, I would have loved to have seen that, but uh, you know, I have we have heard that there were issues with him and Derrick Rose, and that's one of the reasons why I thought he was going to leave. So, you know, if they end up getting along and this team ends up meshing well, Jimmy Butler is going to bring this team great success. And I'll tell you what, Derrick Rose, step out of the way because you got a new man coming in, and he is an animal. Yeah, he absolutely is. Um... I don't know about all that, though, Rhett. Step out of the way, Derrick Rose. Step Come out, out of the way. way. Step Derek out of the Rose way. Derrick is... Rose is... This is going to be Jimmy Butler's team. No. It's going to be Jimmy Butler's team, and he's going to take this city by storm. I disagree with that. This is Derrick Rose's city and Derrick Rose's team. Well, he, he sat is, on the bench and watched for many years, he so is we'll see. And he also led this team for many years and, and was a superstar. And sat on the bench for many years. So this man he's is... Young, buddy. This man's a superstar. He is their superstar. Um, he's proven that he is coming back, and he's back. Uh, I think that... Uh, Jimmy Butler's worth it, but he is not a superstar. So that's that's the difference for me. So I will I'll disagree with that asinine statement. That is just that's. But Mike Dunleavy, this is another th- one that stood out to me. The ex-Pacer, three-year, fifteen million dollars to stay with Chicago. What do you think about that? And can you say that name again? Mike Dunleavy. Mike Dunleavy. I don't like him. But he did help out that Bulls team last year, that's for sure. I'm just not a very, uh, I'm not a fan of 
fan of him because uh, you know he played awful with Indiana Pacers. But I'll tell you what, he sure he, helped the he Bulls meshed, out. He meshed well uh, last year with the the Chicago Bulls, and I think that contract is pretty deserved because he he definitely put them in great position. He definitely did. He definitely did. And we're going to have to move on to the next segment now. There's It just goes to show you how many free agents are out there. Uh, can't even get to all of them, but certainly tried to mention as many as we could that stood out. But, Rhett, we, I want to talk to you really quick at least about Floyd Mayweather because there's been some developing things, but an interesting thing that I kind of wanted to set up a, a type of debate, even though I think we're going to agree with it. Um, but Floyd Mayweather has made almost in 36 minutes in the ring in May against Pacquiao, he made almost as much money as Tim Duncan has made in his 18-year career with the Spurs, $235 million. I want to ask you about that. Asinine or okay? That is just asinine. And that puts it into perspective, doesn't it? That is insane. That's what I, we call stupid money. I don't understand how that is even possible to make that much money in 36 minutes. I, for, especially since the man just bounced around, basically uh, running around in circles. I wish yeah. I could go into a ring and bounce around in circles and make $245 million. 235 235 Absolutely. That yeah. is crazy. I just can't believe it. It just it, – it basically – it makes you wonder, like, all right, they're getting they're, – they're lucky because they've got these pay-per-view numbers with HBO and these contracts set up where they can make so much money. But do you think that there needs to be something in place with that, Rhett, with how much money is in going into this sport like that? Yeah, that, that is – it's insane. I don't understand how – I don't understand why a boxer should get paid that much money. You make $235 million in 36 minutes. Why would you ever box again? Yeah, I mean that's it's crazy when you think about that. I mean, clearly the man's a business a money businessman. I can't stand the guy. Uh a lot of the reason because of his attitude, uh how cocky he is. Uh but the thing is, I agree. I think that that is way too much money for a sport that okay, I get it. It's a very physical uh career life-ending possible risk sport. Um, where it's like, all right, you could die in one fight, but you're that's what you're risking. Gloves, that's where you're risking. That's what you're risking. And quite honestly, you can do that in all the other sports. I just think that for the amount of time they're in the ring, compared to a three-hour football game that, that the guys are out there playing, and they're going to make that much more money. Yeah, and let, I mean, me, let me just tell you this. Let me compare it to this. Floyd Mayweather, in that 36 minutes that he fought, doubled the earning of Michael Jordan in his career of playing in the NBA. That's see, Doubled that's, it. That's ridiculous. That really puts it into perspective. Yes. Doubling Michael Jordan, and Michael Jordan is hands down one of the best athletes to ever play a sport. Yeah. That is just insane. I, I don't like that. Floyd Mayweather is a prick, in my opinion. Yes. But, you know, first of all, the guy just spends his money stupidly. But, you know, I, apparently he can. Yeah, if you're making that much money, apparently Might you well. can. Might as I well. mean, I, I just think, I, I think something has to be done with it. The fact that he's making that much more money than all of these other superstar athletes... In sports that, I mean, obviously people are entertained by that and the money's in that industry. It's just, it's crazy to me that that can be allowed. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, it's crazy to me, first of all, that people will spend this much money to watch the fight. Um, I can understand going in person experiencing that, but that's, pro that's part of the problem. The fight, I mean, why it can happen. The fight generated close to $600 million in revenue. That is insane. $600 million in one fight. Uh, and here's the other thing. The money awarded to the fighters is a result of a guaranteed purse of $72 million in ticket sales. And that doesn't include a record $19 million in national closed-circuit revenue at more than 5,000 bars, restaurants, and commercial establishments. 
and a record $6.9 million in closed-circuit revenue. Insane. I mean, that doesn't even compare to any of the other professional sports. I mean, can anyone say unfair? That is insane. I don't, I don't like that number. I, I, I don't think any athlete should ever be able to make $235 million in 36 minutes, let alone, I don't really even think they should make that, you know, in their career. Because that's just insane. But in 36 minutes, that's just, that's just stupid. It really is. Uh, I just I think something has to be done with it. Maybe it's with the whole pay per view situation and contracts. It's I mean that's why they can afford this. It's just to me, uh, it's just and you look at him. It's the way he markets himself. He makes a lot more money than a lot of the lo- lower end boxers make. So mm-hmm. that shows disparity in the sport with pay. Exactly. Um, you know I just I, I just don't agree with it. I'd like to see something change. And quite honestly, I'd like to see a rematch because Pacquiao won that fight and uh, he got robbed. And you mentioned something to me I want you to bring up about Manny Pacquiao or about Floyd Mayweather, a little announcement that could come later this morning. Yeah, he um, he's more than likely going to get stripped of his title. Um, the news came out that they were planning on stripping his title as of Monday due to domestic violences. Um so that is breaking news that's more than likely going to come out tomorrow so or uh, on Monday morning. So we will see how that is going to go. We will. We will. Uh, I would like to see it. Uh, would- there's, there's nowhere for that in, in not just sports but in life. And beyond that, uh, if you're going to take titles away from other players and, and teams and professional sports for cheating uh, – then for something like this, something needs to be stripped. And yeah, it's because of lack of compliance. Exactly. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would say that that would be well-deserved and, quite honestly, maybe a little bit of, maybe a little bit of justice to the man. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that, that is big news, and I wonder what it will mean, if it will mean a rematch in the future or whatever, but... I'll tell you what, maybe some of his money needs to go too. Exactly. With, that, with after all that that he made, just just insane to me. But something that we wanted to bring up and talk about a little bit because when we found out that stat of of how much in 36 minutes in the ring he's made compared to people's whole careers, just puts that kind of stupid money into perspective. Exactly. Well, Rhett, let's get into this last segment here as the show is winding down and. Let's talk about a man who might be trying to make a comeback. And I got to tell you, he's my favorite golfer. I'd love to see it. That's Tiger Woods. And he paid, played this pla- this past weekend here at the Greenbrier Classic. And let me tell you, Rhett, the man was surging. Uh, he had himself a Tiger Woods effort, we can say, in this one. He ended up 7-under, and in the final round, he shot a 67 to finish 7-under in this tournament. That's, pretty That's great. not just... I'm not just going to say that's pretty good. The way he's been playing lately, that is like a miracle. <laughs> he's maybe found something out here. What do you think about Tiger Woods finishing just six shots off of the lead um, at 7-under in this tournament? You know, I think that was great for him. Uh, I don't see it happening um, very often. You, you, so, in other words, you don't see it happening at the upcoming British Open God, at, no. at St. Andrews in a this couple This dude's going to miss the cut. Wow. No doubt. No doubt in my mind is he going to miss the cut. Um, I do not have faith in him whatsoever. You know, I'm not a, a huge Tiger Woods fan. I do like him, but uh, he's definitely not one of my favorite golfers. He's top, little, he's, top five? Uh, I'd say he's about five or six. Wow. But um, See, I thought he was your second. He no, must we, be falling off your list, Brad. We, uh, when we did the show, when we had our top five golfers... I think he was fifth on my list. He uh, he was definitely not my second, but you know he has he has some issues that he's got to work out, and I just don't see him working those out. Well, I'm gonna disagree with you. The guy changes his swing way too much. That's been his problem is is changing his swing and, and changing swing coaches has really proven bad for Tiger Woods in his career. But I'm gonna disagree with you to make this big of a step. Two weeks after, as bad as he played at the U.S. Open, 
makes me believe Tiger Woods is trying to make himself a serious comeback. Uh, that's just downright impressive uh, to have the round that he did. And I'm going to go as far to say not only is he going to make the cut at the British Open, a course where he's won before and is played St. Andrews more than any golfer on tour, I believe that Tiger Woods will be in contention. That's how far I'm going with Tiger Woods and the Kyle, way he's playing. Kyle, yes, that right. is just the stupidest comment I've heard. That is just stupid. I have, I have, I have ultimate faith in Tiger Woods. Uh, I will never put anything past this man. He is the greatest golfer of all time now, in my mind. I, I, I would like to point out in a, a few episodes ago of this these podcasts, you did say that he did not that he was at the end of his career, and you don't think he was going to make any more pushes. No, yeah. I said... Uh, I, I said... I caught you in your, nope, your web. I said I got that you Tiger Woods will not win another major. I didn't say he won't be in contention, and I changed that based on how he's playing. Uh, he, he, he played in one great tournament. He played but, at one great tournament, and now that's he's on takes. top of the world. Sometimes that's he's all it takes. He's on top of the world. Sometimes that's all it takes, Rhett. Uh, for, the man, for a man who's the greatest golfer of all time, that'd be like saying Michael Jordan could not come back and play basketball. I don't again. think you know, what you're talking about right now. That's I, right. Because he sure as hell couldn't. Uh, you know, it'd be like saying Tiger Woods could not win another tournament. That's that's asinine, right? Not uh, in the British Open. That's that's for sure. He he is a man I would not put anything past. It would be like the analogy I was trying to make. It'd be like Michael Jordan coming back and making a three. He's a legend. The man is going to be able to perform. This tournament proved it. This is all it takes. Okay. He clearly has worked on a lot. Uh, I wouldn't put it past the man to win more majors. And if you if you if you would put it past that man, that would just be disrespectful for a man who has won fourteen majors and changed the game of golf. He's it not takes win it takes major. it takes a f- snap of the fingers to get hot in this sport. And Tiger Woods uh, come back. Yeah, I mean he w- he showed it with the rounds that he played. Uh, the competition happened to run away, but let's not forget how bad he's played lately. So for playing this well, uh, I think you have nothing but you have nothing but encouragement if you're Tiger Woods after this. And the fact that all it, he's the type of player mentally, if he gets his mental game back, more mentally strong than anybody in the history of sports is Tiger Woods. Uh, that's the proven champion, and that's over Michael Jordan, that's over the great Joe Montana. I don't care who it is. He is a winner. And Tiger Woods, if his mental game, and let's not mistake, mental game is the most important aspect to golf. And it's more of a factor than in any other professional sport. Tiger Woods, if his mental game is back, Tiger Woods will be back and be in contention at the British Open. Um... I just see it happening, uh, and he and he's feeling good. He said, I gave myself plenty of looks early to get something going. Could have been three, four, five under on the front nine and got nothing out of it. I feel like I'm really close to putting it together. His short game was better. He was hitting more fairways. That's the key to Tiger Woods' game is keeping it in. You know why I like him at St. Andrews to play better? The fairways run into the greens, which means that he has a lot more leeway of if he happens to miss a fairway, they're longer, he hits the ball long. That bodes well for him. As long as he keeps it out of the the, the fescue, Red Hensley, I like Tiger Woods. I'll, I'll tell you right now, um, he definitely needs to call up Marty and Doc to go back to the future to get that mental game. You know, he hasn't had that in years. So, w- we'll see. But it it all it takes is... And, a, and I can tell you right turn- now... Somebody can have a fantastic game and then just drop off the face of the earth. That so it, it can happen, but I don't see it in Tiger Woods because he's a champion. We'll, we'll see. We will have this. We'll have the same discussion after Tiger Woods misses the cut in British Open, um, and that's that. That we we have we can agree to disagree on this, Kyle. Uh, you have your thoughts. I have my thoughts. 
you know, it's great to have that conversation piece right there. It is. And the disparity. I think you're disrespectful to a man that is the greatest golfer of all time. And I one am. Of the I'm, best I mean, athletes. I'm just going off what I've seen. And he has not had his game in years. So, I mean, I'm sorry that I'm going off facts and not off my heart. But, um... But I'm going off facts, too. I've mentioned them. What? The champion that he is. The champion that he has, but he... he he has not had that in years. That happens. You gotta, you gotta see that, Kyle. You gotta see that. It Just happens. because somebody has, somebody places 32nd in the Greenbrier Open or whatever. Classic. Greenbrier Classic does not mean that they're, they're back on top. and that they're I didn't gonna, say he's back on top. He, I said he'll be in contention because he is he, coming back. You can think that he's, I mean, you can think that, but I do not see it happening. And that's not being disrespectful. It's just having the fact that he's not gonna. He's not gonna be it. I think that you are going off of what you've seen lately. Say seen for and the to past say years. That I mean, you're going off what you've seen back in the future. I mean, all right. Let's well, face it. Tiger Woods. That's like, besides last year, he won five times in 2013. That that, that does. That's not a bad year. It's he like, just didn't win a major. It's like you're saying Michael Jordan's gonna come back and uh, bring the Bulls in contention of the title. All right, now it's you're not just gonna putting words it's, in my mouth. It's not going to happen. That's not what I said. It's not going to happen. I said happen. that'd be like saying Michael Jordan couldn't come back and make a three in the NBA. Well, I can tell you right now, making a three in the NBA and, you know, being very close that was to the my British analogy. Open, that is because just that's how, asinine. Because that, that's, how, that's how good these Hall of Fame athletes are, right? That's, what I'm, that's the point I'm trying to make. I wouldn't put anything past them. Uh I think that I just can't believe how disrespectful you're being to the man. Off it, facts, because you know he has not he has not played great in years. I'm sorry. Off facts, so I'll I'll give you this. Why would you like Rory McIlroy then? Because he's played terrible this, this year. year. One year. One year. One year. Exactly. How many years for Tiger? I mean, when was the last time he missed? He had a uh, he won an. Okay, and aside from last year, tournament. how good was Rory since he's joined since this last year? year? Exactly. So after before last year, you could say the same thing. He went on a drought. It happens. It's golf. Tiger Woods is at the end of his career in the PGA. Tour. I won't disagree with. Pretty that. Pretty soon he'll be in the Senior Tour, and we'll see him do pretty good things. But I will not disagree with that because the man is 39 and he's accomplished so much in his career. But he's not over with. I will not put it past this 39-year-old to make a comeback. Uh, because he is the ultimate when it comes to knowing how to win. And the fact that he got so close, I like his chances. I just he, The key thing to me is what I said at St. Andrews. You have to keep the ball in play at St. Andrews. you got to know how to play that course. It's a windy, long course with thick rough, what? And, and it's fast. What has he struggled with? Going. He's, he's struggled with hitting the fairway. Exactly. And, and in this past tournament at Greenbrier, he hit the fairway or green in regulation off the tee on each of his first ten holes. Throw it, on throw it in, throw some windiness in there, and possibly some rain at that British Open. And, and I expect Tiger I, to do great. We can agree to disagree, Kyle, and we love it. Yes, we can. Uh I'm a little surprised we didn't agree more on this one. Uh, quite honestly, I did not know uh, that you did not care for Tiger Woods as much as that. I think that I, you just recently changed that. You I told did, me I he had was it, number two. I did not. You can go back on the recent episode, and he was either fourth or fifth on my list. I we would, never did a I top would, five favorite golfers. Yes, we, we, uh, no, we, we named him off. No, we, we talked, named him off. Yes. We talked about Tiger Woods. And doing a comeback, we, we talked off. about Rory and Jordan Spieth, but we never had a top five favorite yeah, golfer. Yes, we did. So maybe we need to have that in the future, or maybe you need to go to bed. We but we did that. not have that. Tiger Woods has not been in my top two. I uh, used to not even like Tiger Woods. But, wow. I mean, i not not saying that he's not a great golfer. He just, when I started getting into golf, he, he was, um, that's when he started this issue with his off the off the course issues and it just kind of turned me off to him. Well, but it I came understand. in recent years that I actually started, you know, liking Tiger and, and thinking that he had all those great accomplishments. He did. Let's see if he's past that, Rhett. Let's see if he can get into contention like I think you don't think so. You don't even think he'll make the cut. 
That's bold and quite honestly disrespectful. That is not bold. It just it's just a very true fact. So, Kyle, not a true fact, a true opinion from you. It's a, it's a fact. It's off to recent years. It's a fact. So we'll see. Uh, I do plan on being right, Kyle, but uh, I'm gonna talk but it you over won't. to you now. All right. To recap what was talked about on the show, the top five running backs in the NFL was discussed. We talked about NBA free agency. We chatted about Floyd Mayweather, and we discussed the Greenbrier Classic with Tiger Woods. That is all we have for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to our show. Feel free to leave feedback as we want to be able to address comments and questions on the show. Tweet and retweet the show at Kyle M. Newman, at Rhett Hensley, and at Indiana Pacers Talk. We will be back at it next Monday by 8 Eastern Time. I'm Kyle Newman. And I'm Rhett Hensley. Have a good night, and go sports! Go sports!